And joining us now, AgriGold agronomist in the Southeast, Leslie Lloyd is with us today. Leslie, great to catch up with you again, sir. How are you? Good morning, Jesse. I'm doing great. Thank you. We, uh, we've got harvest underway in South Georgia and North Florida, and uh, the yields are looking really positive, and it's a good time of year. So having yeah, fun out there. Yeah, definitely a good time of year. I know we were chatting a little bit uh, off air about some of those impressive yields there in parts of the southeast. And, you know, I know as you get up more into the mid-south, some yields aren't aren't looking the best. Some of the crop there's looking a little more heat stressed. But uh, as you alluded to, things looking good in, in some of those parts of uh, the far southeast for the corn crop this year. So it's maybe, uh, maybe a little bit of a mixed bag throughout the entire southeast, uh, so to say, Leslie. Yeah, you, you hate to see the obvious drought stricken areas and you see the pictures on Twitter and whatnot. It just it just makes you draw up as much as the corn is drawn up. But we, we've been lucky in the southeast. We've been kind of the garden spot. And, uh, in addition to irrigation, we've been getting, you know, fairly timely rain. So even our dryland stuff um, looks better than I would expect. Um, you know, I, I'm in corn literally every day. Um, doing some field days, whatnot. We've got combines rolling. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. This is going to be a decent year for the Southeastern farmer. Um, if you look at the drought index, we're the only green spot in the country right now, I think. So uh, mm -hmm. our soil moisture is actually adequate. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. looking good out there. Definitely, definitely. Well, I want to talk a little bit of today about corn earworm pressure, and this is something I know uh, seeing a little bit in the southern states, I, I believe, but I'll let you kind of talk to us a little bit. What are you seeing when it comes to corn earworm pressure, Leslie? Yeah, Jesse, uh, definitely seeing it. Uh, there's hot spots. We don't see it in 100% of my trial locations, for example, but I'm seeing it in probably 50%. So uh, North Carolina, for example, Eastern North Carolina, that was the first hot spot we found. And, and it was in, there was a corn earworm in probably 70, 80% of the ears. So that's getting to where the farmer is going to notice that. He's, he's going to see that in yield. Uh, he's going to see that in quality. Corn earworm is going to hurt us when it comes to things like aflatoxin and, and other ear moles and whatnot, because it's a physical damage. And sometimes that's worse than the actual kernels they eat. So definitely out there, we had a hot spot in South uh, East Alabama to where about 50 to 60 percent of the ears had an earworm. You know, th this pest is, is evolved. It's evolved just like, you know, corn rootworm and any other pest. And we're trying to kind of keep pace with it. Um, we're evaluating, you know, hybrids with Viptera. Uh, you know, I can tell you this, in the trials where we have hybrids with Viptera, they are perfect. There's not a single bite from an earworm. That's very positive. Um, you know, a lot of companies are evaluating getting Viptera into the above ground mix and, and it's, and it's paying off for corn earworm. Uh, that's, it's right now looking really positive. You know, cotton has evolved. They've, they've gone to, you know, three modes of action for cotton also. So it's, it, we're evolving that way in corn, you know, what I'm seeing, Jesse, is that the double pro that we've relied on for above ground protection for quite a number of years now is starting to fade. Um, we're seeing corn earworm just kind of blow through that and and feed as much as they want to. Luckily, we haven't had the severity of corn earworm that would really wake pe people up. If we ever do have that, they're going to put a real value on that Viptera trait, you know, moving forward. So I think all the seed companies are, are moving in that direction. Probably about a third of the hybrids I test have Viptera in it. So if it's going to make a yield difference, this might be the year in those hot spots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I'm seeing earworm pressure in my corn crop this year, is there anything I could do at this point in the growing season or what would we be looking at maybe to mitigate it for next year? I know you alluded to some of the, the different hybrids, et cetera, but what could I do if I find corn earworm in my field? So right now, obviously nothing we can do to control it. Um, you know, we're far enough along and at least in the Southeast that, that we wouldn't spray for it or anything like that. Um, I think the main thing is knowledge that with the damage that the corn earworm has done in the tip of the ear, 
we're going to see more weathering. We're going to see more grain quality issues. So being aware of that before you put the grain in a bin, before you take the grain to the elevator or whatever, uh, just be aware that 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 can have a negative effect. So uh, more of an awareness than anything. Um, I would encourage growers to, you know, start shucking back some ears and seeing, you know, what kind of percentage that the earworms are eating. Uh, right now it's fairly small, but if you start eating half the cob, we need to know that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not seeing that by the way, I'm, I'm seeing it mostly in the tips. So until that, that damage gets into the farmer's pocket, they're probably not going to change a whole lot. So they're going to stick with the double pros. Um, when the corn earworm damage gets pretty severe and it is in a few fields that I've seen, um, that's when you start looking at hybrids that have the Vectera traits, start looking at yields this fall uh, from the seed companies, from, from Agrigold and others, and maybe start changing our production practices a little bit. There's also insecticide treatments that you can do earlier in the season. Um, you know, there's some very good active ingredients that have some long residual. So yes, there's things we can do. Mm -hmm. Awareness, I think, is going to be the key. If if you wait and go into the field and just run the combine, you're not going to know that you had the damage. So what I would advise farmers is just go shuck some ears back, see what percentage, shuck back 10 ears and see what percentage had a corn ear worm. Uh, and that's a, yeah, that's a great point you make uh, is, you know, whether it's earworm or any other disease or pest pressure, yeah. I think it highlights the importance, as you've been alluding to, of getting out there and scouting. It is, is so critical to know what's going on in your fields. Yeah, like the fields in North Carolina where we had, you know, 70 and 80 percent of the ears, it's pretty easy to find. Um, you don't you don't have to go look for it. It's, it's there. Uh, but knowing you had like maybe 20 or 30 percent um, that, that can still lead to issues like aflatoxin. Uh, I am seeing Aspergillus flavus out there. I saw a lot of it in Southwest Georgia uh, this week. Uh, typically it's where the ears were damaged, uh, it damaged by either earworms or, or stink bugs, some other things. Um, so Aspergillus flavus is, is probably one of the more serious consequences of corn earworm uh, with that aflatoxin potential. So yeah, knowledge that's, the, the farmer needs to get out there and look, shuck back some ears, see what the damage was, just like they're checking their cotton bowls. Well, Leslie, fantastic stuff. Any other final thoughts you have for us today before we run out of time? Uh, looking forward to getting some yields out. Uh, we're seeing some really positive numbers from South Georgia, particularly where we had the early freeze. A lot of folks jumped out, planted early, had some freeze damage. We had thousands of acres that had freeze damage and now the proof's in the pudding. We saved those. The yields are excellent. And, you know, we feel good about that. So farmers are faced with a lot of challenges and, and it's nice to see some pretty good yield reports coming out there. Uh, at least, you know, from the early reports I'm seeing in South Georgia. Um, so uh, just, yeah, get out in the field before the combine runs, see what you got. And knowledge is a good thing. Well, I couldn't agree more with that. I appreciate the time. Agricultural agronomist Leslie Lloyd, thanks for joining us here today, and we'll hopefully talk to you again soon. Thank you, Jesse. You have a great day.